Hello, everyone. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, so we're just going to wait for a little bit for um, other participants to join. So um, let's take a quick look at the agenda for today. And of course, don't forget that um, any questions that might uh, pop up during the webinar, you can ask them um, at the end of this session. We'll have a couple of minutes to, um, to answer them. I'd be happy to do so. So um, let's take a look at the agenda. Um, today, we are going to talk about designing um, in the report builder. So this is the design um, tab. Then we're going to talk about the chart widgets, the condition-based outcomes, um, something that makes our report builder unique. Um, and of course, then we have a couple of minutes for questions and answers. So I'm just going to jump right in. Um, yeah, so designing your uh, report in our report builder. Um, most of the times, the first thing that you would want to do with your report before you actually start building it in the um, Importer Pro is draft it out. Uh, it will help you overcome, you know, that uh, blank page um, kind of syndrome where you don't know where to place your things and what to start with. So I always just suggest um, taking a look at what you would like to have on each uh, page of your report, um, drafting it out, you know, here's my chart, here's my text, um, here's the, an image, and then you will feel like uh, it's much easier uh, building your pages on Porn Pro. Uh, when you have that, or, or at least an idea of what you would like to your report to look like, uh, you can, yeah, start creating it and um, click on the design tab. So the design tab is not your primary, like most important um, tab <laughs> in the report builder, but here are a few things that you you would want to um, consider. First, this is the place where you would adjust fonts, headers, and footers. So yeah, fonts are an important part of your design. Uh, you can choose from a multiple uh, from multiple fonts that are available on Porter Pro. And then there's also the possibility to upload your custom fonts if it's a Google font, or even we can check whether your um, own custom font is compatible with Porter Pro. Um, headers and footers, of course, make your pages unique. You can have um, some personalized information there as well, like the date and time or um, the respondent's name, respondent's company name. Um, it's important to adjust the logo in the design tab as well, because this is, you, you see here in the um, slide, we have the company logo <clears throat> as a, like a placeholder. This is the logo that will be there on on the download screen when your respondents download the reports. The download screen is white, so make sure that your logo is not completely white. <laughs> so it's important you know, to brand your um, download page as well. Um, in here, we can also check the page format and orientation. The page format can be different for, for like Europe and the US, we have a letter and um, A4 format. This is important for you uh, to take into account when you create background images, and we will take a look at the background images in a moment. There's also page orientation, um, portrait or landscape. And uh, we here set the margins to zero to upload your backgrounds. You'll see this in the um, bottom um, print screen. Um, it's important to set all of the margins to zero so that your background takes up the whole page. Same for the uh, background color. So this is um, the part, it's a little bit hidden away in the design tab, so make sure to adjust your margins to zero. Um, that is a great segue to uh, background images. Uh, on each slide, I have, um, just a side note, we have examples of real assessments and real reports that were created with Pointer Pro by our customers or internally. So this is one of the um, uh, reports reports um, that was created by one of our clients, um, Glass Method. Um, here you'll see how the um, KPI widgets are placed on this beautiful background. Uh, backgrounds allow you to make each of your pages um, unique. Um, what I mean by that, you can create your 
backgrounds uh, in a design, um, in a graphic design tool outside of Pointer Pro, and then upload them for each page. All of the pages could have the same background, so it could even just be a specific header, specific footer, or maybe you have um, a color run through on one side of the page, um, et cetera, any type of design elements. Um, and then you create it as a page. You'll see here uh, in, uh, in the background, uh, background image print screen, um, you upload it with blank spaces where um, conditional um, elements need to go. And then you will be able to place those elements in the right um, places. So again, a very good idea is to um, draft your report in a design uh, graphic design tool. So you can draft out every page uh, where the text would go. I would suggest putting just placeholders and then those texts would be placed on Pointer Pro. Um, but this way you would already have all of the pages designs and the pages layouts. And all you would need to do is then just um, download them as JPEG or PNG and upload them as background images you will find the background image um, upload button under uh, settings if you click on the page first. Uh, moving on, um, also a very important part of creating your pages is uh, margins. So um, we talked about the margins in the design tab. So those were the overall margins that you need to set to zero so that your background takes up the whole page. Um, but then I mentioned placing the content in the right position in the, um, in the report. Um, this will be achieved with margins on each individual component. So all you need to do is just click first on the component that you need to move on the pages uh, or on this specific page. And with margins, you can decide where that component goes. So in this example, you'll see that the KPI widgets those um, round uh, progress circles that you see, they were placed um, exactly um, under, well, the specific part of that, um, of the graphic that is a part of the background. So we need to make sure that these KPI widgets are in the right position. So uh, by default, they will be placed at the top of the page. But as you take a look at the margins here, we placed each um, KPI widget with a uh, the top margin of 90. If you uh, yeah, place just any um, margin, you will see how the component moves. So then you can um, adjust the margin according to the position of the element. So you will actually see live how your content moves and um, you can set the right and very precise margin. So here you can be pretty, um, yeah, pretty precise, I would say. So as you see, there's this beautiful uh, result. The KPI widgets are conditional. Of course, they always show just the um, content that is, well, the result that's relevant to the respondent, um, but they are set in the right position on the page. Um, if we, uh, yeah, talking about highlighting the content. So we all know that reading a full page of text can be very difficult and of course, what we want with reports is to guide the respondent through uh, the report to make sure that they're engaged, to make sure that they are getting the value out of it. They're getting the, only the relevant information and they don't need to, you know, look for those bits of information that they, um, that they need uh, in a large and a long chunk of text. So uh, for you to highlight the most important parts of the text, um, we have text um, borders and also um, horizontal lines. So, of course, the horizontal line, you will find them both in um, on the right-hand side uh, under the widgets view, under basic widgets. So, uh, of course, the lines, the horizontal lines serve to divide the context, uh, the content on the page. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side, right after the a header introduction, for example, uh, we can place a horizontal line, change the color, um, adjust the margins to make the line longer or shorter. Or, um, as you can see on the next example, um, we can also highlight text boxes. So uh, in the example, I just put um, a border around the text box. So it's five uh, pixels in width. It's double and it has that specific color 
that I chose for no reason. Um, and um, you can highlight your um, text boxes this way. I'm not using any background in here, background color or background image. Um, I mean, in the second um, example, but you can also change the background color. And this way you have a highlighted text box also with a specific color on the back end, on the background. But for the introduction, if you look at the header um, behind it, there's this blue uh, little horizontal line. Um, <clears throat> this is a background uh, in the um, text box. So you can also play around with the backgrounds for each text box to achieve this kind of look. Again, very important to remember that, um, yeah, the way we read is uh, is very specific. So uh, it's important to make your pages easy, light, um, and yeah, comprehensive for the respondent. Um, comprehensive results are very, um, yeah, they are essential in your report. And we have several ways of um, displaying um, respondents' results. So this uh, gives me a segue into um, chart widgets. So you can see two beautiful examples from uh, live assessments um, that, we, um, that, that were created with Pointer Pro. Um, these are our spider charts, spider grams, uh, very popular charts um, that look very powerful. And uh, of course, uh, they get a lot of attention. <laughs> you would want this chart to be in the middle of the page and um, you know getting all of the attention of the respondent. So we have uh, several types of charts. Um, I like to divide them into charts that showcase multiple data metrics or single data metrics. Um, spider chart is one of the uh, is a good example of a chart that showcases um, multiple uh, metrics. It allows you to. Um, have an overview of several categories or several questions, several sections of the assessment. Um, and uh, in these charts, as you can see, we are uh, comparing the ideal um, view of oneself uh, and the reality, or in the other one, there is the future and the current um, state of business, for example. So one of uh, the examples is from a personality assessment, the other one is more of a maturity model. So you'll you see we have two lines on the chart, but of course you can have more than two data sets. So it can start from one data set and uh, going up to several uh, lines. So you can compare, um, you know, you and um, <clears throat> again just like here, ideal and reality, future and current, um, <clears throat> and of course you can also compare um, several different um, results of different respondents as well. So you versus group. Um, I personally really like um, spider charts, <laughs> but um, of course we have other um, examples as well. If you take a look at this slide here, um, you will see our KPI widgets, which are um, progress circles. Uh, these are a good example of um, charts that focus on just one um, data metric. So if you want to highlight just that uh, result for a specific category or here you're highlighting them all separately, um, this is also always a good idea. I also think this um, circle, progress circle looks very modern and also very clear. You can adjust the colors to either, you know, color code the results. Um, they can change the color according to different thresholds. Or you can um, color, you know, use the branding colors and then they look very nice on the pages as well. In the second um, picture, we have a column chart, another example of um, highlighting several uh, data sets in one chart and also highlighting different categories. So here we're, by the way, comparing individual scores with aggregate scores. <clears throat> You'll see that this is a performance overview and we see the individual score compared to other managers, in this case, in the organization. So you can compare your, well, an individual score with um, everybody else in on the team, in the department, in the organization, um, also across uh, different branches in the same 
um, company, uh, and of course the overall benchmark, which is um, like everybody who has ever taken this assessment. Um, charts are, I will emphasize this again, <laughs> charts are great for visualizing the results. Um, here we, um, yeah, make sure that, you know, colors speak well to the respondents. Um, charts are always easier to read than text. So, uh, yeah, do really think, yeah, um, of uh, a way to visualize your, res um, respondents' results. We have a we have plenty of charts um, to do that. Um, how we can um, well usually yeah the results the, the charts they are there for numeric values so they show um, points scores. Uh, we can also um, personalize um, other type of content. Um, if you take a look at this next slide. Um, we uh, are looking at the variable menu right here. Something in our um, reports that is very important. It allows you to use different parts of the assessment or different pieces of information that your respondents provide during um, the, uh, yeah, while they take the assessment. Then you can use that information to personalize um, their uh, report. So in the, um, reports, we have two types of content, static content and conditional content. We're going to talk about the content in a couple of minutes. Here, what I want to focus on is making the report really speak to the respondent and also making it really personalized. Um, you know, we all like to see our names. We all like to be addressed by our names and we like when the uh, information that we are reading really appeals and really is relevant to us. So here, if you are in the report editor and you're asking the respondents in the assessment for their name, you can ask them for their job role, you can ask them for their job title, you can ask them for their location, um, age even, so any type of demographic information, or you can ask them, other questions like, what would you like to achieve in your new role? Or what would you like to achieve financially in 20 years? And then use that information to personalize texts in your um, report. So to do this, um, we would only basically just need to use the uh, variable menu that you can see on the screen, uh, print screen highlighted, the X sign that you will find in every um, text box throughout the assessment and the report, of course. And this will help you uh, keep your respondents engaged throughout the report. A very nice example, starting with like very basic things, is personalizing the cover page. So on the cover page, I can already see my name, my company name, the date and time when I took this assessment. Um, to do this, you see on the first, in the first example, we have the variables that were taken from the variable menu. And it says prepared for, and then there's the intro field one response. Uh, on the intro fields, we ask for their name, for the respondent's name. Um, this can be either filled out by the respondent, or you can pre-fill it for them if you have that information. Um, and we also added the response date and time variable. So you see as a result, I see management self-assessment report, um, and it's prepared for Anna and it shows when I took it. Of course, we can also add the company name here. I don't know, whichever other information you would like to place on the cover page. Usually I see name and then company name and the date and time. Um, another um, great example here, and I think this is pretty under, yeah, underestimated. Um, I know I told you that we have static content, but that static content sometimes can actually be really, really personalized for the respondent. So even if it's your introduction, you can already tailor that introduction to the respondent. Just like we have here, um, we ask the respond. well, in this assessment, the respondent actually first stated uh, what they do for a living. So whether they're a homemaker or they're unemployed, employed, entrepreneur, and so on, there were about seven options. And then depending on what they said on that question, they get a specific introduction. So 
So in here on the left hand side, you see how we can um, achieve that. All we need to do is just have, let's say you have seven different options. Um, yeah, as I, as I said, homemaker, unemployed, employed, entrepreneur, and so on, student. Um, we will have seven different introduction texts and each text will have its own condition. The condition can be set um, in the settings. If you just first select the text and then go go to the, um, to the little gear icon. Um, and you see here in the example, we have a rule that says show component, one of the texts, if answer on question one, the first question is about how, what you do for a living, uh, is equal to answer one. So you see here in the text that we get uh, on the front end, what the respondent sees, it says as someone who may be juggling a career with a life, with life outside of work. So, yeah, you already talk about something very personal with this respondent and you tailor your introduction to that as well. So if at some point you ask them what their job title is, you can um, use that in the introduction as well or in other parts of your uh, texts. So this is not even yet feedback that you give them according to the results, but it's already tailored to, uh, to them. Um, as for the feedback, so this is the most important and interesting and um, unique part <laughs> about um, reports, the feedback that the respondents get. So the feedback can be based on numeric values, so on how much they scored on the whole questionnaire or on the whole questionnaire in categories or just on categories. This always depends on your specific scoring mechanism. Um, it can also depend on a specific answer on question if you do not have any squaring in your assessment. So here, we're, uh, I'm just um, highlighting where you see that um, rule uh, part of the report. So each element, if you click on it first and then go to the settings, that little gear icon that's highlighted in the second um, image, you can choose what to base your content on. So in this case, we're basing it on formula category one, which is of course just um, <laughs> just an example, your categories will actually have titles. And we can set a specific range, or you can, yeah, like here from between zero and 10, or you can even just have uh, equal to a specific number. So your, con your feedback can be based on either numeric values or specific answers on specific questions. So here uh, you can see how we show tailored feedback and there are also all of the, you know, action points, tips, tricks, uh, specific advice based on respondent scores, or as I mentioned earlier, just answers or a combination of those. You can also say if they scored 10 points on category A and they said no on question five, show them a specific piece of information. Here uh, you'll see very nice results. You'll see... Um, how you can actually use a visual. The second, the bottom, um, uh, the bottom picture here is a visual of uh, the level of the respondent. You'll see how there are five levels from limited to optimized. And in here, the implemented level is highlighted. You could achieve exactly the same result, but of course with your design, <laughs> um, by just creating five separate images or five background images and showing a specific image or a full page according to a rule. We can also, of course, show or hide full pages. Um, and here on the right, on the top, in the top um, example, on the other hand, we have just text, which is also um, fine. But I would really, you know, highlight the fact that we can also use just visuals um, like these, this beautiful, um, graph uh, at the bottom uh, to show the level of the respondents. Another great example is this um, report that was created internally uh, on Pointer Pro. This is a maturity digital maturity assessment. Um, and you can see how we have four different levels with the starting with crawling beginner. Um, and of course here as well, we can use a just four different uh, pictures with each of the um, levels highlighted. And this is also a great example. We can 
show specific resources that are um, yeah relevant to your level. So to know more, uh, to to yeah, to to go further from this level, you can um, look at this uh, information and you can provide it. Here we're also having a uh, we have a link to a video um, as well. So another um, very good example. I have a lot of examples for you guys today. Um, it are the, these two um, uh, pictures from two reports. Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see, by the way, how uh, beautiful your report can look. Uh, if you, um, yeah, choose a very nice background, all you see on the left-hand side, the um, design, the, um, what do you call it, the artwork uh, at the top with the header, with those uh, different uh, levels of, with, with money in there. Um, this is all a background with a little indicator that says you. You just have, um, how many do you have? Six or seven um, different levels. And you have just several different pictures with that level highlighted. Same on the right hand uh, example. So you have um, these uh, pictures from very poor to very good. Each of them is highlighted. And then you show the right one according to their um, score. And um, just a couple more examples uh, with the variable and condition, well, with the variables and condition based outcomes. Um, you'll see on the left hand side, we're also showing the exact score that the respondents get. So you can always uh, opt out of it if you're not planning to show the exact numbers um, that the respondents got. You can hide them from them and show a specific visual. Um, but of course, in case you want to be very precise and show them the exact numbers, um, that's also possible with the variable menu, um, as long as you're collecting that information in the assessment. So um, yeah, just to sum up, um, I would definitely suggest um, having uh, a draft of your report, um, at least with the content first, um, and by content, I mean what you would actually like to see there. You can always have placeholder texts uh, at the beginning. Um, then, of course, do not forget about backgrounds. This really allows to make your assessment look fully branded. Oh, sorry, your report look fully branded and unique. You can use a lot of different beautiful um, design artwork and um, uh, yeah, texts. Always a good idea to highlight them, you know, have lines, have borders, um, really get uh, your respondents' information, oh, sorry, your respondents' attention to that information. So now let's see um, if we have, if you guys have any questions for me. Maybe you would like to know a bit more about yeah, how, you know, how to create a report. <laughs> I'll try to answer as much as possible. Mm, let me see. Uh, we have a question. Oh, close it. Oh, here we go. Um, how many reports can I generate uh, per assessment? Um, this is a great question. So really, there's no limit for you in terms of how many reports can be linked to one assessment. So one assessment can have multiple reports attached to it that feed on the same data, but have different content and also different audience. So you can have an individual report linked to that assessment, but also a group report with different content. And then um, you can also have, let's say a manager's report with some other information. And then me as an individual, I get the report right away with the download button. The, the group report will be collected after everybody has taken the assessment. And then the manager's report will be sent to them. I can touch the microphone. Will be <laughs> sent to them by um, email. Um, can respondents, Angela is asking, can respondents answer questions in the report builder from a mobile device? Yes. So the answer is yes. Um, of course. Well, the assessment, I guess. <laughs> so the report is the output of your assessment. The assessment can be taken on a mobile phone. It's responsive to every screen size. 
How can I move a report to different assessments? Tom is asking a very good question. We can um, move a report. Um, it, it would be something that our support does. So please reach out to our support uh, chat in the right hand bottom corner of the screen and they would create a copy of your report and then attach it to different assessment. Um, what should be the format for a background image? A uh, question from Andres. Um, well, usually it's a, <clears throat> it can be either a PNG or a JPEG um, um, image. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Can we clone reports to create a template report from which new reports can be more quickly created? Um, I would suggest, yes, this is definitely something that it can be done, but I would suggest creating, a, not cloning reports, but actually cloning an assessment. The report will be already attached to it. So you copy the report and then the assessment can be changed. So uh, instead of just copying the report, I would just go with copying the assessment and it would automatically copy the report. The assessment can be blank so that you can just start from scratch, but the report will have the design um, already there. Um, can we specify our brand font with custom CSS? Yes, uh, Regine is asking about the fonts. A very great question too. Uh, yes, we have a possibility to upload uh, Google fonts with CSS and also your custom fonts, but we would need first to have the license for that uh, font and then also make sure that it's compatible with Pointer Pro. Not all of the fonts are compatible. Uh, um, which aspect ratio and file size should the background image be? Um, we it would, that's a great question, Andres. Um, if you could ask that, our uh, support chat um, in the again in the right hand bottom corner, uh, the little, little chat um, icon, they would be. Um, I'm afraid I don't remember <laughs> the numbers, uh, but they will be able to respond. Oh, and actually, well, I can answer that more or less. Um, you would just need to make sure that the background is either A4 or letter. So it depends on what your page um, format is. So as long as it's an A4 um, format, then it would look good. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, yes, um, I see that Yeroon is uh, joining, uh, sorry, is uh, sharing my other, our other webinar uh, in which we talk more about the um, content of the reports. And just a couple more questions uh, from Leo. Hi, Leo. <laughs> if I copy the assessment, the report follows and I can modify the report if need be. Yes. Every time you copy the assessment, the reports or one report or several reports that are attached to it will be copied over as well. And then you can uh, modify the report, you can modify the assessment. Uh, but the important thing is that your design, your layout will stay um, there and then you can modify the content if needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah is asking how long does it typically take to create a nice looking report? Huh. That's a very good question. Depends on how much time you can dedicate to that. But I will say from experience that a lot of, I would say major, the majority of our customers go live with very nice looking reports. Um, in about three, four weeks. So that's, of course, because there's so many other things always to consider. Um, have we had uh, clients that went live under three weeks? Yes, definitely. We've even had clients that went live under two weeks with very nice looking reports. So yeah, our, our average, of course, goes up a little bit because we have very complex cases as well and they take a little bit longer. Um, but I would say on average, three weeks is definitely visible. All right, so I'm going to uh, just wait uh, maybe a couple of minutes if you guys have any other questions. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, if you have questions about the content or what the report ideally looks like, 
think, or, you know, of course, everybody has their own idea of what the report should have. We have this very nice uh, webinar uh, on reports 101. And uh, there is also our product director, Bruno, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of help you with the um, with what should be there. <laughs> and by the way, um, yes, uh, just to kind of add to Hannah's question about how long it takes to create a report, of course, um, yeah, you can always do it yourself, but we um, are also always is happy to help with their professional services and create the report for you. So in this case, if you have a deadline if, or if you'd like to go live as soon as possible to, you know, start monetizing your um, reports, your assessments and reports right away, uh, we can also um, yeah, provide our professional help. Oh, wait, let me see. Um, we have a question from Val. Uh, hi, Anna. When will the next update of Report Builder come? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, when it comes, we will definitely make a big deal of it, <laughs> you know. So we will definitely let you know. Uh, you can also, Val, by the way, uh, just check with their support team. They have direct um, contact with their product team and they can update you a bit more on that. Um, Terence uh, is asking on one of the slides regarding variables, I saw a field called ID. What is that used for? Great question. The answer can get a bit technical. So the, um, oh, um, you mean the, the settings uh, for each of the elements. That's uh, the ID of that element for coding. So I'm not an expert on CSS, but that's the ID of the element uh, when it comes to CSS. Um, question from Mario, how do respondents receive the report? What methods of delivery are there? Um, well, we can, of course, the most used one is uh, the instant download of the report with the download button on the final screen, but the reports can also be sent via emails. So not the actual report, but the link to download it. We can, yeah, have it as a hyperlink. And you can also um, not have the respondent get the report right away, uh, but you can download the report on your end and then share it with them in person or send it uh, via email as well. So most of the time I would say it's, um, it's an instant download plus uh, a copy of the report via email. So we'll be able to download it later. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all of your questions, guys. These are very, um, you're very observant. <laughs> um, anything, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to know. And because I think we would be wrapping up very soon. I really enjoyed um, yeah, talking about reports, I feel like it's um, something I talk about a lot <laughs> in my life. <laughs> so let me see. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Um, it is always a pleasure. And thank you for being so active with your questions. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, questions, just send us an email. You can see my email here. And we also, of course, have, have our support chat. The guys are always there. They're great. Very happy to help you. So let us know. I'll see you in other webinars, definitely. <laughs> and uh, it was a pleasure as always. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye.